G'day, welcome to Matt's Workshop. This is the first video in a series for rotary attachments for the CO2 laser. We'll be looking at both commonly used rotary attachments, the chuck version and the roller version. Now this is a closer look at the two rotary attachments I have from Cloudray Laser. We have the roller version and the chuck version. Now Cloudray Laser sent their uh, rotary attachments pre-wired in a set wired or wiring order. But if your machine doesn't have a matching plug or your wiring configuration is different, then I'm going to show you how to connect it up. With this version we have a plug there which the rotary attachment connects to and that plug is wired into a terminal block which then gets connected to the y-axis driver. Now most CO2 laser manufacturers use either a two-phase or a three-phase stepper motor and drivers in their y and x axis motions. If you're purchasing a rotary attachment you'll need to know what phase motor you will need. So how do you know which stepper motor your machine has? Now this information can be gathered from your stepper motor drivers. Open the cover of your machine and look for one of the following connection types. For two phase driver it has two terminals, the A terminal and B terminal, both positive and negative. So that's A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. For three phase drivers it will have three terminals, U, V and W. So once you know what type of motor you'll need in your rotary attachment, you'll now need to know how to connect it to the stepper driver. Two-phase stepper motor has four wires or eight wires, while three-phase motors have three wires or six wires. For three-phase rotary attachments, you'll need to check the manual of your motor to find out which is the correct wiring for the U, V and W terminals. For two-phase motors, they have four wires. If your motor has eight wires, then you need to check your manual for detailed definition on the connection. We're going to look at two-phase motors that have four wires. Now to connect your rotary attachment to your laser machine, you'll need a socket like this. Some laser machines already have this pre-wired. But if you need to wire yours up, the way that you select your cables, select a pair of wires, the A and B wires. Now select A plus and A minus and wire them up on one side of the pin. So you could wire them up on pins 1 and pins 2. And then select the other B pair and wire them up on pins 3 and 4. If you've wired them incorrectly, you won't, when you turn the machine on, the chuck or the rollers will be free spinning. Now I'm going to connect this one to the machine and show you what happens if they're wired correctly. So when the wires are connected in the correct pairs, this locks up. So this is actually connected to the machine at the moment. So once it's locked up, that means that the stepper motors are engaged, which means I could step that motor. Once you've got your pairs on, your A pairs and your B pairs, the positive or negative of each of those pairs, it doesn't matter which way they're connected, the only thing that affects is the direction of rotation that can just be adjusted in the software like RDWorks and Lightburn. The other method is to use a multimeter to find the pairs. So a pair will result in the ohm resistance being equal to zero. So just select two of the sockets and when we get a pair we'll get a reading of zero. So in this case one side is zero and the other side will also give me a zero. So we have one pair here and one pair here. So with this machine, I've already got the aviation socket pre-installed and it's wired up next to the lifting platform there and it comes down to this socket here. Now this socket here is the rotary attachment socket and it will plug into the y-axis driver. So we need to power off the machine, remove the connector and connect. After you've wired up the socket, before you connect the rotary attachment, you need to turn off the Y-axis reset on the machine. On the controller, this one here is an RDC6445, and the way to do that is go into Menu, User Settings, go down to Reset Parameter, go across and down to Y on Reset, press Enter, Select no, 
enter, scroll down and write that back to the controller board. If you don't have this controller, then what you need to do is follow the directions or manual on your controller to turn off the Y on reset option. If you don't turn it off, what will happen when you plug in the rotary and you power on your machine, the rotary will continue to spin because it's looking for its zero position or its homing sensor. And because the Y axis now is the rotary, it won't find that zero and it will just continue to spin. So once you've turned this off, it's then safe to turn off the machine and connect your rotary attachment. Now making sure that the laser head is well clear of the rotary attachment, lower it using the Z down button until the laser head is well clear of the rotary attachment. So what we're going to have a look at now briefly is just how to change the rotation direction in your software. I'm going to just briefly explain using RDWorks, but the same can be used for uh, Lightburn. Now in RDWorks, we've got our home position or our origin. That's currently set at the top right hand side. So now if we press start on our job, you'll notice that the chuck is rotating in a counterclockwise direction. So if we go back to RD Works, what we need to do is change this location of our home position. So we go back into config system settings and drop that down to the lower corner. So now our home position is in this lower corner and if we start this job now, we can see that the chuck is rotating in a clockwise direction. So thanks for visiting Matt's workshop. This was just an introduction into the rotary attachments for the CO2 laser. These are from CloudRay. We have the chuck edition and the roller version. In future videos, I'm going to look more closely at each of these look at the settings in the software, the configuration so that we get it all set correctly for each unit and then do a uh, comparison, a pros and a cons. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, press the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I release the next videos. And until next time, take care. Cheers.